And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome to Open Connection, I'm your host, Robert Picto. In response to the dwindling wildlife populations and increased conflict between community members and predatory species, the Taltan central government introduced the Taltan Predator Management Policy. The robust policy encourages Taltan members to encourage their constitutionally protected Aboriginal rights to harvest predatory species, including black bears and grizzly bears and wolves. We begin today's open connection with President of the Taltan Central Council, Chad Norman Day. Today we have more grizzly bears in our territory than people, and a few years back the province and the NDP decided to ban grizzly bear hunting. So prior to that, guide outfitters, resident hunters were able to help keep the grizzly bear population in our territory in check. And some Taltans hunted them as well, especially for uh, safety concerns uh, during fishing season and stuff like that. But today, the only people that uh, have the, the right to hunt grizzly bears are indigenous people in their own territory. So. Taltan people, if we're going to continue to practice predator management, which is something we've done for all kinds of reasons for thousands of years, we need to take matters into our own hands and do that. So for the last couple years, I've tried to lead by example and, and do that with my family, and I'm teaching my oldest son to do that. And it's a lot of fun and it's uh, a great experience being out there on the, the land with family, but it's also very important. We have a very vulnerable population in our territory, a very high volume of, of elders still live in the homeland, and the average British Columbian doesn't realize how little infrastructure we have for medical related issues. We only have one hospital up there. We have a couple clinics in Dees Lake and Iskit and then the hospital um, in Dees Lake and the clinics are in Telegraph and in Iskit. And if we ever had an outbreak, a serious one, um, it could be really bad because to medevac somebody out is going to take several hours and depending on the time of day and stuff like that, it, it could take even over 24 hours. So our wildlife department and our government took a stand and really tried to push back and make sure that we didn't have people coming into the, into the territory. And we also politely asked Taltan people not to be coming in during the, the pandemic. So even someone like myself as the president, because my children are in Smithers, um, I wasn't going back and forth nearly as much as, as I used to either, so it was a collective effort to keep our community safe. Since you've taken over the organization as president of the Taltan Nation, um, uh, there has been a upsurge of, of economic uh, growth in the community, is that right? Yeah, there's there's been a lot of growth. It um, is happening for a plethora of reasons with um, COVID and the pandemic and the, the world's need for additional resources. Uh, a lot of companies are changing the way that they buy products internationally and they, they feel that buying products from places like Europe and Canada are a lot uh, more ethical than buying them from other places like South America and Africa where maybe the environmental standards aren't as high. So I can't take uh, all the credit for that, but there's definitely been an upswing of economic development in the territory the last few years with mining and mineral exploration. And the majority of mineral exploration dollars in British Columbia from year to year are actually spent in Taltan territory because uh, it's an area that has excellent resources. It doesn't have a lot of people. 
and at least so far Taltan have usually been able to um, come to an agreement with, with mining companies when these mines are, are built the right way with, uh, with Taltan input and involvement and benefits coming back to the nation while keeping the environment um, protected. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, hey, from the this. CFTK the TV studios, is this is Open government Connection with your Teltan host, Nation. Robert Picto. The ISCIP ban and the Teltan ban continue to govern Teltan interests in respect to the Indian Act, but endorse the TCG as a representative government of the Teltan Nation in respect to the inherent indigenous title and rights. Let us return in conversation as President Day shares how the Teltan central government has grown. Well, I started in this role just over seven and a half years ago. And when I did, we had four employees, all living in Dees Lake and, you know, a few consultants, most of whom weren't Taltan, kind of running the show from Vancouver. Today, we have over 50 full-time Taltan central government employees. We have over 15 seasonal employees, mostly on the fisheries department and the uh, wildlife department and yeah, most of our people now uh, on the team are, are Taltan and they live all over the place and it's been uh, amazing to see that growth and we definitely, um, you know, need a, need a larger team because Taltan territory is 11% of the province with a lot of things going on. So as much as I uh, love our team and I'm proud of all the growth, we still need a lot more people on our team. We need a lot more growth, but we're, we're going in the right direction. So one of the departments that um, the team and I established a few years ago was the wildlife department. And at the time, we just had one full-time wildlife guardian. And today we have a full-time wildlife uh, director and, you know, several guardians. Most of them are full-time, but some of them are part-time. And it was really about building that internal capacity, making sure that we had more eyes and ears on the ground, investing a lot of money to make sure that uh, all the people within the wildlife department had better training to assist them with all the challenges that come with, you know, Taltan territory, which is a subarctic climate with a lot of challenging topography. And one of the big goals within that wasn't just to, to have eyes and ears out on the, the land when visitors come in, but also to do more internally ourselves to better manage the, the wildlife populations. So we've had dwindling caribou and moose populations for decades now, and it's getting quite concerning with a couple of the herds and in some areas, especially those that are close to our communities that are commonly utilized by local families for food security and things like that. And what we've seen is that um, there's been a huge influx of predators, particularly grizzly bears, wolves, and as a result, the, um, the Taltan Central Government and our Wildlife Department uh, decided that, you know, we should do everything we can to encourage our members to, uh, to go out there and harvest predators because this is going to help our ungulate populations, specifically the uh, caribou and moose, survive if we are able to harvest predators in, in some key areas. Well, we know that um, we have far too many predators than what is sustainable. Um, the science uh, backs up that conclusion and what we've done in the past couple years is we've deployed 20 plus wolf collars on 14 different uh, wolf packs and again going back to to the science we we know that in Taltan territory we have at least five times more wolves than what is sustainable for a healthy predator prey um, relationship, especially when you have 
resident hunters, Taltan hunters, and you know the odd uh, kill from from the roads and and from some of the projects. But relatively speaking, we we don't have a enormous impact on the land because it is 11 percent of the province. But um, you know, there's pros and cons with having an area that big, and a big reason why um, predators have exploded is because of things like the um, grizzly bear ban, because the trapping economy that was in place for you know several generations is not as active as it used to be. Both Taltan and non-Taltan trappers cannot make a a decent living doing that like they used to. When you trap one wolf, for example, it, it takes a lot of money and it takes hours out on the landscape and then once you catch that wolf to skin it out and dry it and tan it and utilize it, it takes a lot of time. So there's been a lot of changes in society that um, have kind of compounded and made it uh, difficult to keep the predators in check and it's really important that we as Taltan people do everything that we can and it's important that the province steps up to the plate and does a better job. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome back to Open Connection. The Kalpan has always supported Taltan people culturally, spiritually, and economically, and they continue to use it and rely on the lands and resources of the Kalpan to sustain them and the communities. Let us return the conversation with President Day. It's a huge loss if we get to a place like um, so many indigenous peoples across BC and across the country who used to have a particular species that they utilized for food and ceremony and gatherings and medicines and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, my children with my former spouse, her people used to have healthy uh, caribou populations and, you know, her grandparents and ancestors for thousands of years used to have a healthy um, caribou population to obviously utilized for all kinds of cultural and nutritional purposes and they don't have that anymore. Um, and there's a lot of other groups and for us as Taltan people to lose the ability to hunt species like caribou or like moose, uh, if you lose that it's just like losing a, a language, maybe even worse because um, it's a huge part of, of who we are. We're not just defined by our language and our belief systems, we're defined by the relationship that we have to the land and, and these animals were absolutely essential to our culture. So Taltan and other indigenous peoples hunting rights are protected in the constitution for a reason, but that doesn't mean anything if governments and other stakeholders can't work together to make sure that we protect them for future generations. One of the things that I saw in the post that you did with your son after you took the sows, there was a, a little bit of a ceremony involved um, with some of the organs and water, is that right? Could you tell me about that a little bit? The first time that we had a successful harvest, I just felt like that was the, the proper thing to do. Uh, I know enough of my language to put together some basic sentences and prayers and stuff like that. And it was just something that we talked about and developed as, as father and son. So for ourselves personally, when, when we harvest a, a bear, um, we, we take the heart and we say a prayer and we put it down the, the river and thank the creator and thank the bear and just thank our ancestors that we're still able to, to practice this culture because of the, the stewardship principles and the damn good job that they did making sure that we could inherit a land base that had healthy wildlife populations. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. 
The Sacred Headwater Zone is recognized for its cultural, social, and spiritual significance to the Taltan people and for its high environmental value. In this final segment of Open Connection, President Day shares the importance of food security in Taltan territory. You know, you're going to have to pay $130 at the local store in Dees Lake if you want five steaks. I know that. I bought some the other day, you know, and this is why it's so important that that food security is protected for us. Um, you know, hunters in other parts of the province talk about needing the ability to hunt. And again, when there's ample opportunity and ample populations, um, I'm totally open to other stakeholders like resident hunters and guide outfitters um, utilizing some of these, these animals as well. But uh, it's a very, very different relationship when uh, you're in an area as isolated with as little infrastructure as we have. It's, it's absolutely essential that we have healthy populations for not just cultural purposes, but also for food security. Do you see that uh, uh, maybe the Taltan may be issuing, lack of a better word, permits to allow these uh, outside, hunter, outside community members to come in to hunt these uh, predators? So one of our ultimate goals is to co-manage and possibly manage someday on our own, but we can start with co-managing uh, wildlife in Taltan territory with the province. And I can tell you that uh, if we were to do that in the way that we envision, it would be based on best practices from other jurisdictions around the world. We would utilize Western science, we would utilize local knowledge, and we would utilize Taltan knowledge. And if I had the authority, if the Taltan central government in our nation had the authority, we would absolutely um, welcome in other hunters to help us with, uh, with predators. When the NDP decided to ban the grizzly bear hunt, uh, I was extremely upset. I felt very disrespected as a Taltan person, as the leader. Um, we would never have agreed to something like that because we have seen firsthand in Taltan territory that uh, the grizzly population was, was growing. It was not um, shrinking. And for the province to say that they were gonna unilaterally ban all grizzly bear hunting because it was against the value system of British Columbians, well, which British Columbians are you talking about? Because Northern British Columbians that have to live with these animals, particularly the indigenous peoples, but I can only speak for Taltan, it is not against our value system whatsoever to make sure that we keep predator populations in check and in balance because this is something that we've been doing for thousands of years. And when you look at the dwindling caribou and moose populations, I can't think of anything stupider than protecting the apex predators who have been shown in other jurisdictions that spend enough money on wildlife studies it's been shown that um, you know, some grizzly bears can take out 30 caribou and moose calves a month. So you can imagine when you're on a landscape that has hundreds, thousands of grizzly bears, it's, uh, it's not good for, for a balanced ecosystem. And we love bears, we love wolves, Taltan people, all fall into either the Siskiya Crow clan or the Chiona Wolf clan, and we by no means ever want to see these um, predators disrespected or eradicated or anything like that. But it's always very important to maintain uh, a balanced ecosystem, a balanced environment, if we as human beings and as Taltans and as British Columbians are gonna be hunting a lot of ungulates every year. What are some of the goals for Taltan? Having a better wildlife management system is going to be my number one priority moving forward because we're getting to a place where we are going to be in a crisis soon with some of these um, caribou herds and with some of these areas with our moose populations. So personally, I think um, some of our big goals are to make sure that we co-manage wildlife in, um, in our area because the province 
does not put enough resources into it. They don't have um, eyes and ears on the ground 365 days a year like we do. Ultimately, we want to create a world-class wildlife management area that follows best practices, not one that's based on making people and making voters happy in Vancouver and Victoria. We need to do this the right way by utilizing science, by utilizing the local knowledge and all those people that live and, and see the changes every year, and by uh, utilizing the, the Taltan knowledge, not just from our ancestors and all the data from previous generations, but all the Taltan knowledge and, and people that we have today. So there's a lot of work to do, and it needs, there needs to be a huge foundational shift in the way that the province prioritizes wildlife. I was reading in the uh, interior news the other day that um, Smithers and Terrace are both lobbying the province to make sure that more of the mining revenues coming off of places like Bruce Jack and Red Chris and from the mineral exploration industry stay in the region and do a better job um, funding places like Terrace and, and Smithers. And they talked about how there was over a billion dollars in expenditures on uh, Red Chris last year. Well, Red Chris is not in Terrace and it's not in Smithers. It's six hours from those communities. Red Chris is in Taltan territory. We don't have an RCMP station in Iskut. Uh, the province has been dragging its feet. We don't have proper wildlife management, even though these are our constitutional rights and absolutely essential to who we are as Taltan people. And it's just shameful that we live in a day and age where in your backyard, the mining industry is funneling millions and millions of dollars back to British Columbians, but it's not being funneled in a fair and proportional way back to the indigenous people and back to the wildlife that are being heavily impacted by these activities. So t to me, it's a, it's a huge relationship issue, the relationship between the province and indigenous people, the relationship between the province and wildlife. And there's gonna be a, a lot of conflict and there's gonna be a lot of consequences if the province does not take wildlife management in our territory more seriously. And I hope that uh, other indigenous people take a, a similar stance because those wildlife, they, de they depend on us and we've been stewards of of our ecosystems and if we lose those relationships it's just another layer of us losing who we are and I as a leader and I know Taltan people will unite behind me and behind the nation when when we say that um, we're not negotiating with our wildlife we absolutely have to maintain those relationships we have to maintain our culture and we need to do a hell of a lot better job funneling more resources into protecting them and protecting our, our constitutional rights that our people have been passing down to us for thousands of years. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Open Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but the connection from his mind to his heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our immensity within. I'm Arvo Victor.